Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Now a week later, the disciples were again inside, and this time, Thomas was with them. Again. Again. That word, again, always brings a smile to my face. It brings a smile to my face because when I hear the word again, I immediately have the image, the image of a parent taking their young toddler and holding them high with their arms up in the air and tossing them up a bit and catching them again. And of course, the child at first is scared to death. And once they realize that mom and dad have caught them, why the exhilaration and the experience automatically invites the child to cry out, again, daddy, again, mommy. Or that word again also conjures up the image of a, of a parent likewise on the playground with their son or daughter, and there they are on the swing, and the parent is, of course, teaching their child how to swing on the swing set, and why from the back pushes them as high and as far as they possibly can. And the child has that exhilarating experience of flying through the air for the very first time. And what do they say to mom and dad? Again, again. So Jesus said to the disciples again, peace be with you. It certainly had to bring a smile to their face. After all, he could have said so much more. He could have said something absolutely the opposite. He could have said to the disciples, and he would have been entitled to, he could have said to the disciples, how dare you? How dare you leave me at the time that I needed you the most? You fled, you doubted, you denied, you did all those things, and yet notice that Jesus comes to the disciples despite the locked doors, and he says to them, not once, but twice, he says to them, peace be with you. He says it again. And so why did Jesus need to tell the disciples that greeting twice? Well, for John, doing it over again is very important. The Gospel writer John, if you remember last Sunday as you and I gathered online and we gathered in a different way together with this pandemic, we heard the same gospel story proclaimed and we joined with the disciple that Jesus loved. And how did the disciple eventually come to believe that Jesus was alive? Well, he had to go into the tomb not once, but he went in twice. He went in again. And it was only after the second time that he saw and he believed. Later, during the week, or this past week, after we heard the story of the resurrection on Easter Sunday, we heard another resurrection story during the weekday this week of Mary Magdalene, where she went to the tomb, and why there she was encountered by two men dressed in white, and she was concerned because, of course, the body of Jesus wasn't there, and then John, the gospel writer, tells us that Mary Magdalene turned, and she saw someone whom she thought was the gardener. And yet it was Jesus standing before her. So John tells us that she turned again. And as she turned the second time, Jesus said to her, Mary. And it was in the turning twice, in turning again, and in hearing her name spoken by our Lord, that she understood that it wasn't just a gardener, but it was her teacher and Lord. Jesus said to the disciples again, peace be with you. And now a week later, while the disciples were again inside, this time Thomas was with them. Again, they gathered on the first day of the week. 
And that's why you and I are here today. That's why you've chosen to turn on your computers, your electronic devices, to be able to celebrate the Eucharist today because certainly you can't be here in person, but nonetheless, you do it. Why? Because you realize we need to do this again and again and again. Because every time we do this, every time we gather, every time we worship, every time we pray, every time we break bread together, every time we do it again and again and again, we are reminding ourselves and we remember that the risen Christ is in our midst. Despite the locked doors sometimes that fear brings to us. You see, the first time that Jesus said, peace be with you to the disciples in that upper room, why, he had to say that the first time so that he could deal with their fear. The first peace be with you helped them to deal with their fear. For they were gathered for fear of the Jewish leaders. And the second peace, the second greeting that Jesus says to the disciples again is a commissioning. It is a sending them out on mission. Notice Jesus says, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them and said to them, go. The sins you hang on to, they shall be remain. But the sins that you're able to let go of, well, they shall be, they shall be gone. So Jesus invites the disciples and he invites you and I again and again to receive the gift of his peace so that it might alleviate our fears, the fears that we have that are real, that aren't just imagined. And he speaks the word of peace to us again and again so that we might then go on mission, that we might be his mediators of mercy and of love and of forgiveness to each person we meet. Because when we do that, why then we encounter the risen Christ who comes in our midst again and again, even when we're not expecting him, even when the doors of our mind and our heart are locked. Jesus comes from within, and he is present there. A few years ago, I and my two oldest sisters and my first cousin, Nancy, went to the birthplace of my grandparents, Belgium. Now, traveling with these three women provides ample homilies for years to come. But nonetheless, what I can tell you about my experience going to Belgium is one day as we went to one of the relatives of my grandmother. Now, my grandmother was very, very short in stature. She barely came up to my chest. She was a short but a feisty woman of faith. And my first cousin, Nancy, looks just like her. So when we entered into the house of these relatives of my grandmother across the other side of the ocean, and my grandmother, who had been gone from her place of birth for decades, as we walked into their home, these relatives started saying out loud, Tanta Vera! Tanta Vera! Tanta Vera! And we had no idea what they were saying. But our friend who was traveling with us, who was our translator that day, smiled and looked at us and they, she said, they're saying, Auntie Vera. Auntie Vera, because you see, as they saw my first cousin Nancy standing there, they thought it was their Aunt Vera, my grandmother, who had been gone for decades from her place of birth, whom she had not been seen for decades by these relatives of hers, these nieces and nephews who were now in their now in their 80s. But yet as soon as they saw this middle-aged woman, likewise short in stature, with the same facial appearances, they thought they were seeing their Aunt Vera. As though, as though this aunt of theirs 
And my grandmother had come back from the dead. And indeed, despite the locked doors of distance and years of not being there, she, my grandmother, was standing there in the midst of us, found in a familiar face, in another woman of faith. You see, my friends, every single day, the risen Christ comes to us from within, behind our locked doors, and he makes his appearance known to us, the appearance that comes to us through loved ones that have died and have gone before us because, of course, we see an appearance, we see uh, an image, we see an experience, we perhaps hear or smell something, and we're automatically reminded of this loved one that has gone before us, and we realize that even though they're gone, here they are in our midst. That's how the risen Christ comes to us each and every day, through our forgiveness of one another, through our compassion for one another, through our kindness for one another, through all those people who are donating constant hours and time and materials to sow mass for our healthcare workers. Why, my friends, in all of those actions, again and again, the risen Christ is discovered and he's found in our midst. And he says to us, Peace be with you again.